Hello, this video is mostly about this comic here, Extra Factors Annual 6. It's the final part of this Excellent Men crossover called King of Queens, and I thought I would show all the covers side by side like I promised. As you can see, there is a sequential thing going on with the two central characters, the Villians. We have got Arnus and Kevin James. Arnus, she is absorbing energy as it goes along. And Kevin James, he is getting fatter and fatter. The other thing is the characters in the background change with every cover to reflect that book stars. So here we have got Excellent Force. This is the new Warriors. This is the Excellent Men, but it's also not the Excellent Men. It's kind of like the reserve team, the substitute team. And finally, we have got Extra Factors, and we'll be talking more about that later on. All these covers, they are by Michael Hellboy, except this new Warriors one. This is by Michael Hellboy, but the new Warriors in the background are actually drawn by that book's regular artist, Mark Bagels. And I think that actually ruins this progression thing. It makes this one look a little bit out of place. The new Warriors, they're, they're not in the same style as Excellent Force or The Excellent Men. Simple concept though, and I think it, it worked out okay. I would say of these covers, Extra Factors is probably the image that works the best alone. I think this is a really good cover, independent of the whole collection. Uh, this is Extra Factors, and Extra Factors were the original Excellent Men. And it seems weird because the Excellent Men issue, that had a bunch of characters who would later become Extra Factors, like multiplication man and miss magnets and squealy's daughter but here we have got extra factors and it's characters that you would think of as excellent men we open up and we have got a really nice shot of some of the large cast of characters here and interestingly none of the book stars are on this image the Excellent Men, and I'm just going to call them that because Cyclist is leading them. This is very much the Excellent Men for me. They are travelling to Scotland because they have found out about the rebirth of Proton VPN. He is one of the Excellent Men's most powerful villains ever. We've got a little great bit down here acknowledging the shared universe. We've got Captain America, he offers the Avengers to come and help out. Then we have got Red Man, he is offering up the Russian superheroes. And Captain Britain, he has got Excalibur ready. Honestly though, I'm, I'm surprised Excalibur were not included in this crossover. Since they are based over here and they could easily just get on a bus to Scotland. Uh, they didn't have an annual that year, and I suppose it would just make the cast even bigger. So, the excellent men, they try to land, but Proton VPN, he destroys their jet. Uh, this bit here, though, this bit, actually helps get across the threat of Proton VPN tremendously. Cyclist, he gans, it is him. It has to be. He is just playing with us. He could destroy us with a thought. Then we have got some really trippy, some really psychedelic stuff with them fighting Proton VPN. He is a reality warping mutie, so this all makes sense. We've got some kind of garish colours. A whole comic of just this could, it could easily give you a bad head. Now the crux of the story, the crux of the story is really good. I really like it. You might think that this is going to be a big action spectacle, but it has some depth. 
It is about mothers and parents. Because Arnus here, she was a bad mother to Kevin James. She was abusive and neglectful. She really was like the worst mother ever. She reminds me a bit of my mum. And then we have got Boren Myra here, who is the mother of Proton VPN. She locked her son away and experimented on him, and then was okay with killing him. And this version of Proton VPN, he is almost a composite of their two children. And this idea it expands to include other characters in the cast who are parents, like cyclist or who have interesting relationships with their parents so here we see how useless fighting against proton vpn is he uses his reality warping powers to change wingman's wings in the not wings and cyclist he shoots his eye beams but well they're no good he uses his powers to just make them not day out the closest they get to a victory is Snowman here. And this is Snowman before he was transformed into an offensive gay stereotype. Snowman manages to freeze him, but it doesn't work out. And Proton VPN, he drowns Snowman in himself or summit. It's trippy. And we've got the stupid whore here who I hate. She is useless, as she always is. She's probably thinking about shagging Proton VPN anyway. At this point, the colours do start to hurt your head, but we're done with them after this two-page bit. The Smurf, the Smurf, he tries to attack Proton VPN with some gauntlets because Proton VPN... He is allergic to metal. That is how they beat him last time. Uh, probably because Christopher Claravoyant had seen that in a film the same week that he created Proton VPN. But this new version of Proton VPN isn't weak to it anymore. It's like it's had an upgrade. Meanwhile, Ea is the evil terrorist who wanted to recreate Proton VPN for themselves. Uh, unfortunately, Proton VPN is too mental for them to use. And here is some more of these ingenious chess metaphors that they have milked so hard that the tea is dry. Honestly, I would just skip these chess bits. They're, they're just... An embarrassing distraction. And here we have got all the other heroes. All the other characters from this story. The excellent men. They find them and I love. I just really love this big cast shot here. Really good image. Proton VPN. He has sent all his opponents away to some sideways dimension. And we start getting the customary recap of the crossover so far. And they start planning what to do to stop Proton VPN. First up, we have got the whore and legend, Daniel Stevens off the telly. They combine their telepathic powers to bring everyone up to speed and know everything that is going on. And legend, he starts to sing, This is a walrus by the popular musical group, The Beatles. They realise that Proton VPN, he was happier being dead and he's upset that they have brought him back to life. So Cyclist, because he is the best excellent man and he is the master strategist, he comes up with the plan of how to deal with Proton VPN. They're gonna have to try and talk Proton VPN in the committing suicide, which is, in my opinion, a really dodgy plot line and could easily be a disaster. But the writer, Fabio Nicieza, he manages to do it adeptly. 
But first, obviously, Proton VPN is concerned with dealing with the two abusive and neglectful mothers. Uh, all the heroes, they are debating the ethics of trying to get a vulnerable child in a killing himself. I think this discussion helps. It shows that Fabio Nicieza is aware and while it is the course of action that they pursue, he raises how it isn't heroic. And one of the most interesting things is, well, there's a common belief that the idea that Cable's here was sightless son, people think that it wasn't ever intended. It wasn't planned and it was just like an idea that they decided halfway into a story. Uh, I think that it is probably true that Robert Lee Fieldman never planned Cables as Cyclist's son, but this crossover has a few blatant clues that Fabio Nicieza was always thinking that. Uh, for starters, in this New Warriors issue, Cables, he offers up an alias. Uh, his alias is Winters, which is an obvious little hint of his true surname, Summoners. And here, Cables, who has been up to this point a cold, stone-faced grump, he is he's really against the idea of sacrificing Proton VPN. This is obviously because... It mirrors his own life. When his father, Cyclist, who is proposing this plan, Cyclist did the exact same thing to him, sacrificed him for the greater good. This is just really, really clever foreshadowing. Rather than just go ahead, Cyclist, he acknowledges the ethical dispute and he presents both he presents both options to Proton VPN. I like this. I like this because even though Cyclist has proposed it as a solution, he is insisting it is like the last resort. Uh, and here you can see again Cables and Cyclist arguing. And this is just really smart. Uh, if I had one major criticism of this story though, it misses two other enormous parallels to draw from. First, we have got legend here, Daniel Stevens. His own life mirrors Proton VPN and Kevin James's enormously. He was locked away by boring Myra MacDonald because his powers couldn't be controlled. He was neglected by his father, Dr. X, who never knew he existed. And Dr. X even fought to kill Legend to end his threat. And after that, when everything was resolved and Dr. X had met his son, well, Dr. X, he left Earth and didn't seem to make any effort to maintain a presence in his son's life. And on top of everything, of all these characters, Legend, he has power level that means that he could actually just fight Proton VPN. Uh, secondly, not a great page for him, I think he's on this next one. Secondly, we have got Major Victory here, whose father physically abused him and continued to be abusive towards him because... Uh, he was unhappy with his son being a mutie. Uh, this will eventually build to a big plot line in issues of the new warriors. But in this story, it seems both Major Victory and Legend they would have they would have more to say on this matter or more to offer to the debate than just being in the background of the ethical debate. Uh, the two mothers though, the two mothers, they're also pleading with Proton VPN. We've got Bor and Myra trying to 
encourage him to kill himself and honestly, uh, just just trying to abuse him some more, calling him a freak and stuff. And then cannonballs just twats her in the face. Uh, but I really feel, I really feel that Proton VPN should, he should have fucking horrifically killed Arnus. But he doesn't. He instead agrees he was happier dead and just opts to end his own existence. And Cables, Cables is furious about this. Cables is really cross. Uh, I can't stress how clever this all is. This little hint. Cables. Uh, Cables wouldn't actually be revealed as sightless son for another two years. And Fabio Nicieza, he was already under setting it up, planting seeds. Then we have got the terrorists. They agree it was all a disaster. And terrifyingly, we discover that Arnus has another child that they can use to try and recreate this whole project again. Uh, it never happens and Arnus never appears again. And she simply doesn't get her comeuppance in this story. She was a terrible mother and... A terrible person and the story needed her to suffer and finally some more chess metaphors back up story time this is the evil brotherhood of evil mutants of evil and their crazy adventures in the Middle East most of them have incurred critical injuries like uh, G.I. Joe he is somehow still alive despite losing an arm and being horrifically incinerated. Uh, then we have got this bit here with G.I. Joe that is probably the best part of this whole Brotherhood storyline. G.I. Joe, he is, I mean look at him, he is barely alive. And he begs Avocado to help him, to help help him escape, to not leave him for death. And we've just got these silent panels here as Avocado thinks about it. And then Avocado, he grabs his fallen comrade and helps him. Nice character moment, but unfortunately it requires you to ignore the fact that Avocado had his stomach sliced open in part one and then he was caught in the same explosion as G.I. Joe in part two. Uh, we end with Tom Beaver and Fireman Sam. They end up getting left behind because uh, they can't get them out of the hot zone and they just surrender to the terrorists or the authorities or whatever. Uh, I don't know if this plot line is ever actually resolved i think i think they might just show up again and there's no mention of them being captives of the middle east uh the one thing you've all been wondering no doubt is well we've had all the evil brotherhood of evil mutants of evil accounted for in this story except for mistake the smurf woman well here is a backup story all about her this is where she was. This is all about her mourning the death of Irene from Sherlock Holmes, who was killed by Daniel Stevens in that Reval story. Uh, I do really like that for this King of Queens crossover, they worked out where all these characters were in correlation with the main event. And this does, this does a better job of adding depth and exploring Mistake's character than anything that Christopher Caravoyan ever wrote. And it ends with her spreading Irene's ashes. Uh, this is a really good conclusion to the King of Queens storyline. I like that it tackles a tricky subject with the suicide stuff but it does it well and of course it uses some of the characters really well uh, i rate this issue seven thumbs up and finally as a whole this crossover 
I think is one of the strongest offerings from Marvel's yearly crossovers confined to annuals. We have sensible groupings with this mostly being excellent men characters and teams and the inclusion of the new warriors it isn't forced and it makes sense and going forward the new warriors will often be thrown in with excellent force uh, across this whole thing fabio nicieza he manages to balance the characters so that at no point does it feel like one of these casts, one of these individual casts, is irrelevant. It does have a slow start with the Excellent Force Annual effectively just being set up, framed with some action scenes. And a lot of the new Warriors issue is devoted to excellent force and the new warriors fighting but they are both still enjoyable reads the highlights would be these two final parts uh, this one featuring some unlikely characters and giving them a part in this crossover and this final part for resolving the story naturally and tackling the whole assisted suicide idea with some serious consideration all in all i think this is a very readable crossover and while there are little nitpicks or oversights along the way i think from beginning to end it is a solid read i rate the king of queens crossover seven thumbs up